Visuals driven by text are how we accomplish mass communication through television and film. Visual presentation of text documents is the content our internet is made up of. Visual manipulation of the code contained in blocks or a canvas is a compelling and powerful way to control the electromagnetic spectrum in GNU radio. Our engineering is heavily influenced by our understanding of narrative. We tend to think of progress in terms of journeys and quests. We believe in connected streams of existence. We believe that those streams obey the passage of time. These streams encounter various obstacles in the way. There is a start, a development, a climax, a resolution, and a finale. The idea of a single stream of consciousness is embedded in our natural languages. This way of thinking extends into our work as programmers, developers, and designers. We make assumptions about the software and hardware that we all use based on our understanding of time, observations, and what it means to process, and how we measure progress. The standard way to draw a schematic circuit diagram in the United States is left to right, data flow style. Most of us write computer code linearly. The vast majority of code will not compile if you fail to define a variable before you use it. If digital signal processing code is a textual poem, and if the two-dimensional graph representation of a GNU radio work is the visual art of the narrative, then we have a place to start discussing something about GNU radio that has been true since the very beginning. We have an architectural dedication to data flow. This stops us from doing some of the things we want to do with the GNU radio framework. In GNU radio, streams of data are sourced. They flow through blocks that act upon it, and the results sync either into hardware or files. All data is shared. It's seen and touched and often changed by everything in the path. Switching the data or having one data type run out while the other data type continues can and does result in errors. We came by this data flow approach quite honestly. One of the earliest demonstrations of GNU Radio by Matt Edis and Eric Blossom was at the 2007 Tucson Amateur Packet Radio Digital Communications Conference. There were contrasts drawn with another project that also got a lot of attention with presented work that weekend called DTTSP. For those that wonder why the GNU Radio Conference organizing team has made so much of an effort over the past two or three years to coordinate with DCC, it's because of long-standing connections and interactions between the two communities. That's a big reason. That demonstration, which had a BPSK demo and an HT emulator, made a big impression and sparked a lot of conversation and development. During discussions between the participants, it became clear that the constraints on the two projects were different. Early decisions about how each project addressed their different sets of constraints had lasting repercussions. Previous software work in the relatively new field of software-defined radio was accomplished by doing things like all the processing inside hardware interrupts in things like Visual Basic. This included handling the screen and user interface. While this met some performance goals, there were some obvious practical limits to this approach. DTTSP filled a need for a cross-platform body of software. It became an SDR engine that would run separately from the user interface and other functions. Signal processing was done by multi-threaded processes running somewhat autonomously. It was multi-threaded from the beginning. Design constraint was to provide something called minimum latency. This is not the same as real time, which incurs additional and in this case, unwanted constraints. The reason latency was so pressing is because the most commonly used hardware at the time had a hard switch between transmit and receive. DTTSP was designed under the assumption it would have to manage audio hardware. Latency was the primary constraint. GNU Radio prioritized ease of programming in Python. This became a fundamental constraint for GNU Radio. The data flow approach that prioritizes ease of programming in Python is a very good one. Data flow methodology is authentic and legitimate digital signal processing. GNU Radio is highly successful, but data flow is not the only way, and restricting ourselves to a data flow approach enforces a limit on our work that we as a community increasingly care about. This limit includes cognitive radio, machine learning, deep learning, and expert systems. A data flow approach where we gather our fellow sample friends and walk to Mordor through filters, amplifiers, descramblers, matrix manipulations, multipliers, shifters, and so much other landscape cannot deliver an expert system. A cognitive radio is an expert system. The signal processing components necessarily occupy only a corner of that structure. A departure from strict data flow design would allow GNU radio to adapt to recent demands of signal work and would more easily enable cognitive radio. 
Consider any two arbitrary blocks. One is a source and the other is a sink. How do you gracefully disconnect one block from the other and switch it somewhere else on the fly? If we cannot do this, then we cannot do cognitive radio. GNU radio does not formally represent all the states that a block can be in or require that blocks define all their states. Cognitive programmability is outside the digital signal processing framework. In order to allow us to incorporate cognitive radio, we have to put the digital signal processing at the sensors and evaluate the states in the central cognitive brain. This brain decides what state transitions to make based on what is coming in from these sensors. A probability model or utility computation makes state transitions based on the reported observations. The sensor says, I am attempting to demodulate and it's suddenly producing hash of a particular type. The brain goes, oh, we need to change things. I think I see the problem. Try this instead. In accordance with the utility and the policy, the brain either changes the parameters of the demodulator or invokes someone else's assistance. This means the data path may have to be switched somewhere else without crashing or restarting. That's why cognitive radio can be very difficult to implement with a data flow approach. We don't want to move the digital signal processing and the data flow to the brain. The brain needs to look at the states. In simplest form, the brain is watching essentially a, a green, red, light, a stop, go signal on each of the DSP functions. If we see a red light or a stop, then we dump metrics on how well that sensor has been doing the processing. We can use a data flow approach in the sensors, but we will never get real cognitive radio traction if the brain is inside the data flow. The brain has to be separate from it. The alternative to data flow in terms of mathematics is to do just this. We separate what we do into blocks that are as independent as possible. The blocks are all separate computation engines. We copy the data whenever it's needed in order to do whatever math is required. A module or block can agree to hand over a copy of its state, but that's a capability that needs to be built explicitly. We give up the overarching narrative of a two-dimensional directed graph with unbroken streams of data in favor of distributed processing, where there may be no explicit stream, and we do not share data. We understand that we cannot know the entire system state without effort. It is possible to infer the state because you can query all the other individual pieces. You can say, what are you? What are you doing? You can retrospectively reconstruct the global state at a particular point in the computation. However, there is no supervisor that knows the entire state, and that is a consequence of not sharing data. We simply get done with what we need to get done as a state diagram within our block within some specified amount of time, or else we raise a flag that we are the critical path and we have failed. That state diagram approach is crucial. Each block is forced to be a state diagram. There are no undefined states. Unused states are handled in orderly and expected ways. Data arrives, it's processed, and leaves. We know the limits of each block in terms of timing. If there is no shared state and no shared data, then exhausting all the possible state transitions is a finite problem. No block will ever explode. They are robust. This is the whole game in terms of being able to gracefully switch from one block to another as expert systems and cognitive radio require. Each individual block or module has to know what states it can be in and what transitions need to occur. There has to be a state transition diagram for each individual module. This means leaving the two-dimensional data flow map. We have to take a step back from our dedication to the journey to Mordor. The quest to get the one ring from source to sink through blocks, never giving up control and maintaining our unique soul and special trajectory through time, must be abandoned. A secondary and related problem is the lack of control over latency. There isn't a good way to get visibility on problems with latency. You might not be able to tell from within GNU Radio that there is a serious problem with your USB and your Type-E amplifier project. Everything might appear to be completely fine within GNU Radio, but the glitches in the produced signals are not acceptable and cannot be used to control your amplifier. Do we solve both of these problems at the same time? Can we improve our approach to latency while also enabling cognitive radio? Are the latency issues really that bad? Our current data flow approach is just a stream, and it's up to us to keep track of any time-based ratios or the calculations will not work. The learning curve and debugging on this is time-consuming. Latency control improvements are usability improvements. The throttle block exposes the latency issues. It usually takes a sample rate and is generally used in the absence of hardware to not let the flow graph run rampant. 
But even with a throttle block, there is no guarantee on the timing. With discipline, practice, and well-conditioned problem sets, a lot of excellent software-defined radio work has been done, is done today, will be presented, and will continue in the foreseeable future. DTTSP didn't have to worry about this because all the computation was being done as close to locked synchronous fashion because of the tight integration with hardware, specifically audio hardware. Best effort delivery of data provided a large degree of control over latency. Decoupling as many of the systems as possible and forcing them to be finite state machines doesn't just enable integration of things like expert systems, it also improves visibility and control over latency. Blocks that are programmed from the point of view of a state diagram, and not only as a data flow, can take advantage of the benefits of a minimal latency mindset. If you want someone else to do process something, then you send a copy. Let the other block follow its own clock. It might be the same clock that you're following, but it might not be. We may have memory subsystems that are operating at one rate, I.O. at another rate. We may have scheduling issues dealing with weird branches, and we may be sending data to a GPU for yet more processing. This means that architecture becomes more like a chip and much less like a directed graph. And this means the design of the signaling between separate blocks is critical. The most appropriate synchronization mechanism may be a barrier. Unfortunately, barriers are the least popular mechanism for synchronization in terms of language support. Barriers are best known from high-performance Fortran. So why barriers and not messages or semaphores? Well, barriers may provide the function we are after. We do want minimal latency. We want computation engines to finish within certain amounts of time and signal appropriately at some preordained time. Barriers can be thought of as walls. Everyone has to reach that wall, and they have to be listed on that wall before they can proceed past that point. There's another wall further down. The computation is carried out by independent blocks that coordinate at known barrier points. So can C++ do this? Quite possibly. Would another language be better? Quite possibly. Should there be a custom design language for GNU Radio? Well, sure, why not? We're worth it. But this goes back to the fundamental and productive constraint of making GNU Radio easy to program in Python. And this is not a constraint to relax lightly, if at all. What about a language like Erlang? And what about GNU Radio Companion? Well, you just got curvy lines. You, you want to blow all that up for disconnected blocks that look like so much wreckage on the Pelennor fields? Well, let's pretend that we rewrote the set of blocks we want to use as finite state machines. And let's say we decided to do this in Erlang, and we got it working within a Pythonic structure. In a full-blown Erlang application, the lowest level processes can be designed to do error trapping and recovery, but they usually aren't. And this is deliberate. The lowest level processes are really children of supervisory processes that let the children fail. The supervisor then restarts them, or whatever else is appropriate to the policy. Those supervisory processes are the primary interface of the low level function to the rest of the application and to the world. A GNU radio flow graph, even in this extremely unlikely case, of the rise of Erlang, can still serve as the graphical user interface, and it can still define our radios. This means we don't lose GNU Radio Companion. We can choose to interpret flow graphs as a fictitious map of connections among low-level blocks, which all have invisible supervisors behind them. Or we can think of the blocks as actually representing the supervisory functions, which maintain the fiction that only the data flow part matters, while the supervisors make everything hygienic. So is MATLAB a potential engine for GNU Radio computational blocks? Well, no. MATLAB is not expressive enough to be an interface for programming GNU Radio. MATLAB does have frequent and productive use in support of an enormous variety of digital signal processing simulation and work. However, there's a lot that simply cannot be done in MATLAB from a programming language perspective, and those things are required for GNU Radio. This is especially true if we are concerned with doing cognitive radio work. If there was a way to reliably control the latency in the interface to and from MATLAB, then we could consider using it for live computation. These ideas are not new. They were presented at DCC starting in 2007. They were perhaps introduced at a time where the hardware, the software, and the community programming expertise were not quite up to execution that would deliver the results required for enough performance to justify the work. However, we are past that point now. Therefore, we are looking at expanding the runtime of GNU Radio to include potential architectural changes like what is being discussed here today. Questions, comments, and critique, welcome and encouraged. Thank you to Tapper for the opportunity to present this work today. It's an honor to be part of such a long and rich tradition in open source software-defined radio.